The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Thank you very much, IT. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the city of Doral uh, Council meeting. Today is Wednesday, September 14th, the year of our Lord 2022. Mm -hmm. It is 10.04 a.m. Madam Clerk, please go ahead and call the roll. Councilman Oscar Puy Corvey. Present. Councilwoman Claudia Mariaca. Present. Councilman Pete Cabrera. Present. Vice Mayor Digna Cabral. Present. Mayor slash Commissioner elect Juan Carlos Bermudez. Present. Do you have a quorum? You know, please rise, face the flag, and join us the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation. Okay, we will be led in today's invocation by Councilwoman Mariaca. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. If everybody would join me now and bow your heads. Dear Lord, we are here to discuss topics that will benefit the people in our community. We want to think about how we can make life easier for everyone involved. Come and give us the wisdom to make the right decisions. Be our leader during this meeting. Show us the way because you have chosen us to be here. Open our eyes to spiritual solutions and help us make this city, our city, our community, prosper and thrive. Amen. Right, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. If you're here for the first time, welcome. If you're here for the umpteenth time, welcome back. Uh, just a couple of rules. Uh, you will be able to speak during the general public comment portion. Uh, and if there are any ordinances, you will be also be able to speak during that uh, uh, time or a resolution that requires public hearing. Uh, simple rules, number one, if uh, you are here and you're going to speak on your phone for some reason or another, please um, step outside because sometimes it's difficult to hear the people that are speaking if the phone conversation is going on inside the chambers. Number two, you'll have three minutes to give us your point of view. There's a clock on the right-hand side. Uh, like in the NCAA basketball tournament, for those of you who love basketball, the buzzer will sound at the three-minute mark, and I will ask you to wrap up your opinion, your point of view. Number three, you can criticize me. You can criticize my colleagues. You can criticize the administration. You can criticize your spouse. You can criticize your dog, even, if you so choose. Uh, but you must do it respectfully. If not, the young man in the back in the dark blue will tap you on the shoulder and say, Excuse me, but uh, you need to step outside. It's never happened, but uh, we, that's what makes democracy work in our country. We can all agree to disagree, but respectfully. So um, is there anything on the agenda order of business, Mr. City Manager? City Attorney, Madam Clerk? No, no? sir. OK. Uh, anything from the council? There will be none. Then we're going to move forward. We're going to open it up to the public. And by the way, one last thing. If you're going to speak, please uh, fill out a form. There's a white one for general comments, blue in favor of an item, yellow if you're opposed. So I am now going to uh, call up those who have registered to speak, and I will begin with Genesis Barraza. And if you could please, Genesis, and whoever comes afterwards, please uh, state your name and your ad address for the record before you start speaking. Hi, everyone. My name is Genesis, and my address is 2441 Southwest 31st Ave. Just moved. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you, everyone, for allowing me to speak today. I'm actually here because I love Miami, and I want our residents to live longer and healthier lives. I was raised in Little Havana, went to school there, and now I am the Miami-Dade County representative for the American Cancer Society. And I would like to invite you all to attend our October 6th event on October 6th at 7 p.m. at our Miami headquarters. I know Vice Mayor and Mayor, you already sent in your responses. I really appreciate that. And I want to make sure that the rest of our council members have seen my invite and are um, maybe able to check their calendars to attend. Uh, the American Cancer Society over the past 100 years has invested over $5 billion into cancer research because we have a goal of reducing cancer mortality by 40% come 2035. And so far we're making good progress towards that goal. We are at 31%. Uh, we hit the same roadblock that everyone else did. And because of COVID, we've seen a drastic reduction in cancer screenings all throughout the nation. 
Here in Florida and Miami, that's especially dangerous because our Hispanic and black communities already face so many cancer disparities and we have an increased rate of cancer mortality due to late diagnosis. So we really want to get, make sure that everyone is getting screened and having access to the resources that they need. So again, please join me October 6th uh, at 7 p.m. at our Miami headquarters. I have some invites here, if I may. Um, give them to the clerk. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you, Genesis. If you can give them to the clerk, she'll distribute them. Thank you very much. Welcome back. Juan David Payares. Good morning, Mayor. Good morning, Councilman, and everyone part of this council. My name is Juan David Payares, uh, 9340 Southwest 118th Place. I am um, very uh, proud to be here today. Thank you for the time. Um, I'm a local business uh, man and um, entrepreneur uh, in solar energy, but I'm not here to talk about that today. I'm here to talk about something that I'm very passionate about, which is the Colombian Vallenato music. Every year, um, we organize the Festival Vallenato here in Doral, and um, I'm, by the way, I'm the founder and president of that as well. It's, it's, it's a non-for-profit organization that dedicates itself to protecting and promoting Vallenato music. And every year we carry out the event here at Doral. This year we invited the Cedar Doral to be part of this event, to embrace it and to support it. Um, it involves the entire community. It involves international and local businesses and um, many of the uh, sister cities like Barranquilla and Armenia as well. Uh, we were told that um, there's no budget for this kind of event this year, which is understandable, you know, time frame. We did start this very early on, and um, our ask or, or request is to see if there's a possibility to reconsider this decision um, to possibly help out with some of the fees at the parks. We carry out this event every year in Doral. We want to keep it here at Doral. I think it's, it's a great event for the community and the local businesses. Um, again, we also want some guidance as to how do we convey the message and portray ourselves better for the future and also for next year's consideration. Again, thank you for the opportunity and thank you for the time to speak. Thank you, Juan David. Uh, Ricky Rosian. Buenos días a todos. Primero que nada, eh, le doy las gracias por la oportunidad de escucharme hoy. Ricky, eh, espérate. Before you start, yo te voy a tener que traducir o la, o la, o la que, querida clerk va a tener que traducir. Así que lo que vamos a hacer, da el nombre, la dirección. Ok. okay. Y, 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 porque, y la, si es una entidad porque estás aquí, ella lo traduce. Entonces empieza, okay. empieza, para y ella te traduce. Okay. 8250 Northwest. 8250 Northwest. 112 Court. One El Second Court. Ok, Doral, Florida. Doral, Florida. Eh, mi nombre es Ricky Rusian. My name is Ricky Rusian. Instructora Rusian, me llaman todos. She's an instructor. Eh, todos saben mi caminar por Wake Dolphin. Tengo 20 años de Wake Dolphin, pero. She's got 20 years of White Dolphin experience. Eh, hice desde que emigré a este país la Fundación Rayito de Luz. She created the Foundation Rayito de Luz. Porque yo fui una niña especial, inválida y caminé a los 15 años. She had a disability at 15 years old. Y mi compromiso con Dios es pagarle dando servicio a los niños especiales. She wants to provide service to special needs community. Que está que están en el silla de rueda porque yo estuve en esos zapatos. That are in wheelchairs because she was in those same shoes. El motivo de mi visita hoy es para dejarle saber que she estoy, wants to let the council know. estoy pidiendo permiso para que se haga un evento para unir los niños regulares de Wake Dolphin Swimming Academy que ha mantenido la fundación Rayito de Luz. She's Esto, asking for an event to combine the regular kids with the kids from her foundation. Que gracias a estos clientes hemos pagado la Fundación Rayito de Luz, la terapia acuática, equino y de caballo. That she has been able to pay for the therapy for those kids. Y soy la única fundación del estado de la Florida que da las tres terapias. And she's the only foundation in the state of Florida that provides the three kinds of therapies. Y lo hago con el alma. And she no does it with her soul. No espero nada, simplemente les pido a ustedes que me ayuden a unir a los niños regulares con los niños especiales para hacer un evento el 8 de octubre. She's asking for help to unite the regular community with the special needs community to do an event on October 8th. Nadando todos por un niño especial. Swimming everybody for special kids. Okay, 
Thank you. Muchas gracias, eh, Ricky. Muchas gracias. Y eh, obviamente lo entendemos y también el administrador. Okay. Muchas gracias. Richard Gluckstadt. Good morning, Council. Richard Gluckstead, 4768, Northwest 114th Avenue. This is from Deuteronomy. Moses said to all Israel the words which the Lord commanded him, quote, See, I have set before you today life and prosperity, death and adversity. If you obey my commandments of the Lord your God, that I am commanding you today by loving the Lord your God, walking in his ways and observing his commandments, decrees and ordinances, then you shall live and become numerous, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to possess. But if your heart turns away and you do not hear, but are led astray to bow down to other gods like money and serve them, I declare to you today that you shall perish You shall not live long in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. So curses, did you hear that word? Curses. Choose life so that you and your descendants may live, loving the Lord your God, obeying him and holding fast to him. For that means life to you and length of days, so that you may live in the land that the Lord swore to give to your ancestors, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Now I'm going to call the roll for all the people that are uh, running for office. Let's start with seat one. If you're here, raise your hand, please. Susie Castillo, she here today? Uh, Frank Gomez? Carlos Pereira? Rafael Pinedo, any of those people here today? No, okay. Uh, Council C2, Yvette uh, Gonzalez Petkovic, absent, I'm sure. Maureen Porras, never seen her at a meeting. Juan Manuel Sucre, absent. Council C4, <coughs> Digna Cabral, you're here. Juan Carlos Esquivel, Guy never goes to any meetings. And then, of course, for mayor, we have Claudia Mariaca. She's here. Christy Fraga, absent. Pete Cabrera's here. And Haya Motero, never seen him at a meeting either. He's always absent. So let me see. I have a few more seconds left. What I'd like to sum it up with is that our laws of this country are based on this, the Bible. This is the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence. This is based on this. Let me just read. I have another 30 seconds. Go ahead, wrap it up. You can. 30 seconds, please. Then I'll get out of your hair. This is from the Declaration of Independence. I thought it was appropriate. Most people have never read the Constitution. This is the Declaration of Independence. Thus the cardinal moral truths are these, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving the just powers from the consent of the governed. So like I said last month, everybody needs to follow the Constitution. Sometimes we forget that we don't follow the Constitution. We have nothing in this country, absolutely nothing. Thank you very much, Mr. Glugstad. You're welcome. Is there anybody else that would like to speak at this time to during the general public comment portion? Okay. Would you like to speak? Okay. <laughs> okay. So at this point, thank you. So at this point, we will close the general public comment portion. 
and move on with our agenda. Madam Clerk, I'm going to turn this over to you. The next item will be the consent agenda. It will be all items on Section 6. Okay. The chair. Motion to approve. There's a motion Second. to approve by Councilman Mariaca, seconded by Councilman Oscar Puig Corve. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Any nays? Let the record reflect it's unanimous. Next item, Madam Clerk. Next item, item seven, approval of minutes. All of the items on section seven. Motion to approve. It's a motion approved by Vice Mayor Cabral. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Councilman Mariaca. Uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Any nays? Are there any nays? No, then let Madam Clerk let the record reflect it's uh, unanimous. Next item, Madam Clerk. Next item, item 8A, presentations, Keep Draw Beautiful Business Award. Okay, I believe, oh, Danny's going to be doing the presentation today. Good morning, Honorable Mayor, Vice Mayor, members of the Council, Mr. Attorney, Mr. Manager, Mr. Attorney, Madam Clerk. Danny Del Toro, Assistant co Compliance Director. This month, we are pleased to recognize SL Rama International for their outstanding commitment to keeping their all beautiful. The property for which they're being recognized is located at 10481 Northwest 36th Street. SL Rama International has been in the city of Doral since 1984. The property is approximately 22,800 total square feet and the business has nine employees. Established in 1985, SL Rama International is an import export company on the list of top suppliers in the United States and is also listed in the Trade India's list of verified sellers. Some of the recent improvements include repainting the entire building, resurfacing and restriping the parking lot and regular maintenance of the landscape. It is with great pleasure that we recommend SL Rama International for the Keep the Rao Beautiful Business Award for their continued efforts to keeping the Rao beautiful. Mr. Mayor and Council, President of the company, Mr. Tony Sujan is here to accept the award. Okay, do you want to come on up? <laughs> you don't have to say anything unless you want to, but it's up to you. <laughs> and then we'll call you up to give you the award officially. Mr. Mayor, I got to compliment you. You're running a city so beautiful and your team had been here since 85. And we haven't had one incident where I could say, you know, Doral is not doing good. You guys do keeping it beautiful, keeping it safe, and Doral is growing. As okay. I've been here since 85, and the growth I've seen in Doral, I don't think so in South Florida, I've seen the growth in any other city. So thank you all for doing your job, and thank you. Hmm? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's saying. <laughs> No, because we have luggage wholesale and export company right. also besides the import export. Right. So she said you must mention that too. Ah, uh, good. You you got to you got an opportunity. Well, th you can ever need. Luggage. Ever need luggage. Yes. It's on us. It's on us. And you're a two-time winner, right? Yeah. This is my second. Yes. When when yes. I got in 2012, Mr. Mayor, you were the mayor yeah. at that time yeah. also. Yeah. And yeah. that time I had asked only one question: if Anybody is older than me in Doral since 1984, please raise your hand. And nobody raised the hand. <laughs> nobody did. Well, thank you so much. I mean, this program means a lot to us because it's, uh, it's indicative of our businesses that make the city successful. And we appreciate you having your business even before we were a city and continuing to yeah, beautify exactly. the city. So come on up and let's give you the, the official, the award official. <laughs> Thank you. 
give me one more smile. Thank you again, TCAM, for the kind words, and S.O. Rama for winning the second time and being part of our community in this special program. Okay, Madam Clerk, next item. Item 8B, presentation by Crow LLP on human resources and payroll internal audit. Okay, who's going to lead us on this, Mr. Manager, or are we going to turn it over to uh, Crow LLP right off the bat without you saying a word? Oops, excuse me. Mr. Mayor and, and Council, uh, Crow has done an, um, they've been doing evaluations for us uh, on all the uh, departments and, and this report's gonna be for our human resource and payroll uh, audit. Welcome. Good morning, okay. thank you. Um, Honorable Mayor, Vice Mayor, Council members and st city staff, thank you so much. Michelle Blackstock with Crow LLP and we have the pleasure of serving as internal audit function for the city. Um, today we're going to present to you our um, report on human resources and payroll. Specifically, our objective was procedures to determine if the human resources and the finance department were performing their core responsibilities in, in accordance with the policies and procedures of those departments related to specific human resources and payroll functions um, and determine if improvements could be made in those areas. Um, the detail of the procedures are very lengthy and they start on page four of the report that I believe that you all have. I was not gonna cover those in detail now. This is just you know, a high level overview for you today. Um, the focus of our internal audit related to functions that included terminations, new hires and onboarding, pay rate changes, personnel files and safeguarding of that information, insurance and benefits, FLMA, leave of absence, payroll accuracy, and PTO accrual. Um, when we look at our opportunities that we present to you, we base this on a risk approach. Um, we assign a risk related to the opportunities for improvement by an evaluation based on the significance of the item, as well as the likelihood of that item occurring. So the, the higher those are, the higher the risk that gets assigned to it. Very quickly, the summary, our procedures found five opportunities for improvements, two of which we um, rated as high risk, two were moderate risk, and one was low risk. Today, I'm just gonna go over in a little more detail the high risk and then a high level on the moderate risk items. <clears throat> the first item had to do with terminations, and during our testing of the city's policies and procedures surrounding um, employee termination checklists, specifically, <clears throat> excuse me, we noted the following. The termination checklist is signed off by the preparer and then reviewed by another HR employee. However, there was no evidence of that sec second review being performed. And then for six of the 10 terminated um, employees that we tested, not all of the necessary signatures were obtained on the equipment return form. So when an employee leaves, there's a form that needs to get filled out for all of their passes or computer equipment and things like that. Um, we recommended the checklist be reviewed and signed by another HR employee to ensure that all the steps have been completed correctly and that all necessary documents have been scanned. And then we also recommend that in instances where the employee is not able to um, get all the required signatures on the equipment return form, that the HR department take over that responsibility. And um, the response from management and their action plan they have actually updated the new hire checklist as follows. 
there is a place for a second sign off for a reviewer that has been added. And also there is a legend that has been created to explain how the checklist must be handled by the HR members. Our next high risk opportunity for improvement had to do with time cards. Um, and this had to do with the city's um, policy that all salaried and hourly employees' time cards must be improved by both the employee and um, the uh, approver or the supervisor for each pay period. And so we noted the following during our testing. All 20 time cards reviewed did not have any evidence of the employee's review and approval. And nine of the 20 time cards reviewed did not have the direct supervisor's approval. Um, we just recommend that all time cards be signed by the employee and also their direct supervisor for the city's policy. Um, management's response was that the version of the Kronos timekeeping system that was currently in use did not allow um, dual improving uh, of those um, time cards. But then on April 25th, 2022, the department implemented Paycom timekeeping and it did allow for the dual approval process and so that's now in place. Um, the next were the two moderate opportunities. The first having to do with FLMA acknowledgement. Um, we just recommend that documentation to acknowledge the FLMA hours used and then the remaining hours um, be um, presented to that employee when they return from work. And we did not find documentation or we're not given that documentation. Um, so management plan and response is that they have updated our checklist to reflect that all employees will receive a copy of the calendar outlining the hours that were used via an internal office mail, which would be a physical copy, and that the, um, this will be provided to the employee via a sealed envelope marked as confidential. The next item was um, surrounding pay rate changes, and we noted one out of 20 pay rate changes that were approved to take effect on October 1st of 2020. It did not go into effect until July of 2021, as all the signatures were not completed timely. And management's response is that um, the employee's evaluation was not completed in a timely manner by the supervisor, and this is something that was outside of their you know, specific control. Um, however, it was received in July of 2021, and the valuation was in a uh, immediately processed um, for those changes. Um, and then they also decided that it was important to send out um, reminders to all supervisors two months in advance of any of those due dates um, to help facilitate the timely filing of that. Um, I wanted to take the time and just to thank the departments for their professionalism and their assistance as always, um, how they take this mat all of these matters and opportunities for improvement very seriously to better serve the city. Um, if there are any questions that anyone might have. Any questions? I do. For Michelle, Councilman. Yeah, this Corbin. audit was taken during 2021 processes? It was 2021, 2022. We Until when, 2022? The sampling that we chose went right. back a little bit further. But how far into 2022, just so we know? I believe that we were finishing up in early 2022. <clears throat> okay. I think that um, there were some staffing changes, and because of COVID, it kind yes. of <laughs> Yeah, I asked because I know the administration has implemented a lot of changes, and just wanted to make sure it was before that. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Any other questions? I, I have a couple questions. Uh, number one, and thanks for, I think you mentioned it was early 2022 through April, so that, I understand that, uh, and I'm glad that some changes were made subsequent to that. But my, um, a couple questions. At any point, did you look into the supervisory role of uh, elected officials over their legislative aides and the requirement of uh, proper timing? Uh, and also, for any of the charter officials, or was that beyond the purview of what you looked at? I believe that some of the forms that we reviewed um, incorporated all of the individuals when we were testing. Um, so we looked at it in that respect from the policies and procedures. Specifically, if we if we selected any of those individuals, I, I do not know that from memory. Um, but we, we do look at the populations of all terminated employees, all new hires, and then in general, as far as polling um, the, the files, personnel files. Okay, and then the, I guess the other question I have is um, the, the changes to the termination record, which I think are great because that way you have 
uh, clarity and, and double sign off when, when someone either leaves or gets terminated. How long do you suggest that those records be kept? Because one of the issues that I have, no offense to the world's greatest clerk, is the maintenance of these records is very important because there is, um, for, for two reasons, you know, the city can always face some sort of legal action from someone. Uh, and, you know, there is a statute of limitations, but, you know, if the records are not around at the time of that statute of limitations, that puts us in a difficult position. Is there any recommendation that you have as uh, how long these records should be maintained? I believe that the minimum would be seven years. And I think that, you know, your point is very valid. I know that I have someone that I work with, and they always say, if it's not documented, it's not done. Um, and I think that, you know, the hard part is, especially with this situation, the terminations, is um, electronic. Um, we've gone to such an electronic age and world, and so it's hard to um, be able to d uh, catch, like, emails and things that we're sending out to document those things. But it's important to keep all of those records and get them in the personnel files. And then my, my suggestion would be at least a minimum of seven years. Minimum seven on years. Those. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Absolutely. Any other questions? If not, Michelle, thank you so much for uh, your work, and thank you for helping us move along, and thank you for the administration and the new human resource director to help implement some of these steps along with management. Adam Clark, next uh, item. Next item, HC, a come quarterly report on bond projects. So he left his office, and he has now come up here to give us the report. Uh, good morning, Mr. Mayor, uh, Madam Vice Mayor, Council Members, City Attorneys, City Manager, and City Clerk. I'm here to give the, oh, my name is George Garcia with ACOM, um, Program Manager for the Parks Bond Program. Uh, I'm going to be giving the quarterly report for 2022. We didn't have a quarterly report last, so I'll be doing quarter one of 2022 and then quarter two. I'll try and go through it as swiftly as possible. Let me know if I'm going too fast or if you have questions. Okay. Okay, so starting off with Cultural Arts Center in quarter one, uh, January through March, these are some of the major milestones. Uh, specifically, air chillers were installed, air handling units, and elevator installation were the major milestones. I have a couple photos there. And moving on to White Course Park in quarter one, uh, playground equipment was installed, uh, the fitness equipment was installed, and the uh, parking pavilions, uh, paving, and landscaping, majority of the landscaping work was completed in the first quarter. Again, we have some photos there. Moving on to Central Park. Uh, this In the first quarter of this year, the um, all phases of the project master permits were issued by all authorities having jurisdiction. Uh, and the final budget was established for the park as well. And there's some other, a uh, couple other milestones on there. I've uh, got a couple photos here. This is January through March. And then trails lighting milestones. Uh, light pole installation began. Uh, the build out of the IT uh, room as well started and completed in uh, the first quarter. And the uh, light poles along the uh, path and trails and tails was also installed. I got a couple photos there of that work. So for Trails Network, the contract uh, was issued and the uh, bike path work was completed. This was a, a relatively short operation, but definitely a, a nice add to the community. I can name a couple of the streets. I don't know if you guys are familiar with this. Down 104th uh, Path, 82nd Street, 89th, 88th Street, and 112th Avenue. So finally, the pedestrian bridge, uh, the construction manager bridge were received and the contractor was selected. It's a uh, Condote America. And the uh, Durham Meadow Park and Morgan Levy, those parks have been substantially completed for some time at this point, uh, minus uh, concession uh, grease trap work for Morgan Levy. So moving on to any questions on quarter one? 
Any questions, quarter one? No. Nope. Let's go on to quarter two. Moving on to quarter two, this covers April through June. And starting off with Cultural Arts Center, um, a rough MEP work at this stage was completed. Uh, stucco exterior work was also completed, as well as uh, paint. Interior finish work uh, began, and the final grading of the exterior site work uh, commenced. There's a couple other milestones for that project there. And here's some photos. Okay, moving on to White Course Park. Uh, in, this, in the second quarter, we achieved the substantial completion and we had the ribbon cutting ceremony. Water meters were installed. The majority of the sub-permits were closed. Uh, we achieved the TCO and the ribbon cutting. Got some photos there. Better photos there. So moving on to Central Park, it's starting to ramp up in the second quarter. Uh, civil underground infrastructure work uh, recommenced, uh, which included the water main install, sewer mains, and the laterals. Uh, also, the GMP schedule was uh, established by the contractor and uh, those to release those scopes of work to the uh, low bidders. Some photos of that work in Central Park. So trails and tails, lighting of the trails, um, completed all conduit installation, uh, IT room uh, was also completed, and the, the most of the permits are closed at this stage. All sod was replaced. Some photos of that park. And then for the pedestrian bridge, the CEI bids uh, were submitted and shortlisted. Um, Meadow Park is complete. Morgan Levy and Trails Network at this stage are also completed. Any questions on quarter two? Questions on quarter two? So moving on. So this is uh, current and planned work. This essentially covers quarter three, which we're in right now. Uh, the end of September um, would be the end of quarter three. And these are some uh, expectations, ongoing work, and uh, things that have already been completed. FPL meter installation has been completed. BDA testing has been completed. Carpet install, elevator control installation. Majority of these activities have been completed with uh, the TCO uh, scheduled for the 23rd. Central Park. Uh, we have turnover A and B issued for phase two and three. Uh, GMP work that releases the majority of the east half of the park, uh, including the amphitheater, the skate park, uh, pavilions, uh, baseball fields, and the children's playgrounds. Uh, we can also continue with the underground infrastructure, uh, civil work, and laterals. And then moving to trails and tails. Uh, there's minor pending work, but this project has already been substantially completed. IT infrastructure and, and finishes. And then Doral White Course Park has some minor, um, uh, minor work to be done there. Again, this project has already been substantially completed and uh, achieved uh, final CO, Certificate of Occupancy, uh, I think last week. Morgan Levy, final inspections completed. All permits have been closed. Uh, this allows the concessions to uh, open. And Trails Network is just, uh, it's in the closing document stage. And moving into Pedestrian Bridge, we've issued the contract to Condote, as well as the NTP, and we're just appending execution of that contract. So this is a general uh, overview of the uh, projects on the program, and also shows their substantial completion and closeout projected dates, as well as when they were completed, if they are. And this is the uh, budget summary for the entire program. We are roughly 18% <coughs> complete with the uh, Parks Bond program. And that is all.
Any questions? Questions? Comments, queries, or concerns? I got uh, one comment. Sure. I have um, just one comment. I, 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 first of all, I appreciate it. I also wanted to thank um, the manager for adding um, a little more information to our reports, which is great, so then residents can be aware of exactly where we stand. But I appreciate um, doing these recaps because a lot of people seem to think that this par park bond is about one project only, and it isn't. So seeing all these projects, having that completed um, sign right next to them is great because we're moving right along. Most of the smaller projects have been finished. There's only a couple left. Um, of course, the um, I'd like to still call it J.C. Bermuda's Park. I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor, but uh, Central Park um, is the biggest one that we're all looking forward to. But it's great to see the Cultural Arts Center coming up very soon and everything else that's being done. So thank you so much for your work, and thank you, uh, Mr. Manager, for for overseeing this because it can't. It's, this is about teamwork. So thank you. Thank you, guys. George, I got, I got a question and a comment. Um, the question is, so we are going to be able to, it's substantially completed, but we expect to be able to open the cultural facility now in early October, correct? Yes, that is correct. Okay. And then the comment is, you know, um, I, I do want to thank, uh, reiterate what uh, Councilman Mariaka said and thank the administration, but also thank you uh, and our public information office. I really think those videos are good about Doral Central Park because there's a tremendous misunderstanding that, uh, not understanding the amount of work that needs to be done um, to elevate the park to get all the uh, underground work done so we can build the first uh, aqu public aquatic facility uh, by a municipality in Dade County in almost half a century. Um, and the other things, the amphitheater, we can go down the list. So I really think those videos are very good and I think it's important to get those videos out um, uh, and thank you for your part in, in making some of these uh, contractors and subcontractors available to speak to to present in layman's terms all the work that's being done because just a tremendous misunderstanding that a project of this size uh, is going to get done in you know uh, a very short period of time and you know it's it's, it's election season so uh, somebody's going to try to you know give their own version of the events and it's important that you who know what's going on let get that information out. So thank you for your work on that. Absolutely. Thanks for coming down from your office too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thanks. Thank you everybody. Okay, Madam Clerk, next item. Next item, item 8D, Planning and Zoning Department Recap Presentation. Okay, we have Javi and Manny. I thought you guys gave one of these recently or was that during the budget? Good morning. It was the budget, okay. Good morning. All right. Okay, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. It's like turning around and walking away. But... Yeah. You're fine, you're fine, you're fine. Good morning, uh, Mayor, Vice Mayor, City Council members, Mr. City Attorney, Mr. Manager, Madam Clerk, and the public. Uh, we did uh, provide a recap presentation at the budget workshop, so some of these things are probably fresh on your mind, uh, and we'll try to be brief. Okay, my name is, again, my name is Javier Gonzalez alongside Manuel Pila, economic developer, to provide you with the presentation for the department. Our mission statement <clears throat> is to be a solution-oriented organization that provides quality municipal planning services in an efficient and cost-effective manner, consistent with the requirements of the city's comprehensive plan, land development code, and with the utmost respect for the residents that we represent and serve. Uh, our functions, <clears throat> key functions, are to update and implement the city's comprehensive plan to promote the health, safety, general welfare, and the quality of life in the city. We administer the city's land development code to ensure land use compliance for all properties located within city limits. We manage economic development strategies, including business education, grants, promotions, sister cities programs, and other efforts to promote private investment and community improvement. We manage the local business tax receipts for businesses in the yearly renewal process. And lastly, we we'll oversee the public arts program to integrate works of art into public spaces, create a sense of place, and promote the local economy. This is an image uh, reflecting the organizational chart. This year, we added a position titled Business Outreach Coordinator 
that has been a tremendous addition to economic development division, and they have been able to uh, do a lot more. The uh, one planner position was currently open during the budget recap. That, that person is currently in the background process with HR. Hopefully, by October, we'll be fully staffed. This is a general overview of the city. Uh, currently, there's a population of 81,182, 165 acres of parks, 23 schools, 259 miles of city roads, 28.24 miles of bikeway network, and by 2030, we're projecting a population of 98,869, a park level of service of 297 acres, schools, that number is to be determined. Miami-Dade County is responsible for, for public school facility planning for a five-year period. 265 miles of city roads and an additional uh, 21 miles of bikeway network. Some are key performance indicators, uh, starting at the top left with local business tax receipts. We have currently registered an active 7,238 businesses. We have added a quick BTR payment feature online, which has been very convenient for the businesses with their invoice, invoice numbers, they put it in, they pay, and it's extremely fast and effective. On the bottom, we have processed 107 zoning letters, 48 outdoor events, seven window sign applications, 10 outdoor dining applications, and 28 site plans. We're currently averaging on the site plans about 15 business days to complete the review and turn around comments to the, the applicant. Uh, to the right, we have presented to you 85 planning and zoning items throughout the year. We've reviewed 2,803 permits. That includes building and zoning permits. And we're currently averaging less than six days for the review of those uh, permits. We have uh, completed 1,554 zoning inspections and assisted a total of walk-in customers of 3,760. Now moving on to accomplishments this year, we have processed five amendments to the city's comprehensive plan. One was creating the property rights element, a requirement of Florida statutes. Uh, two, uh, amend the tax for the Dural Decor comprehensive plan land use category. Uh, to establish clear guidelines and eliminate uh, conflicting policies that were in the comp plan. Three, we amended the future land use map to rename the Decor District consistent with the current name. We've updated the capital improvement element for the city for 2022 and processed one small scale land use amendment. Continuing with accomplishments, we have uh, completed seven amendments to the city's code, including home-based business regulations, um, city alcohol beverage regulations with the help of the city attorney's office, the billboard reduction incentive program, the uh, Dural Decor District land development code tax amendment. The, pot, the regulations for the court district were all over the code. We comprised that in, in, um, in just one chapter now. The, we also created an overlay on the zoning map so that uh, residents and developers and, and other stakeholders can see the boundaries of the decor district. We've updated the artificial turf regulation and we're currently in the process of updating the special events. Second reading will be on September 28th, establishing pop-up program initiatives and a garage sale permit requirements. Uh, one item that is not on this list is that we're also presenting to you on the 28th the uh, city single family driver regulations. We're recommending modifications to that section of the code. As for next year, we have a Dural Boulevard Street Beautification Master Plan, plan that is going to take place from the Palmetto to 93rd Court. We are completing the landscaping, update to the landscaping regulations of the code and, the, and any recommendations based on the Dural Boulevard Street Beautification Master Plan, we're planning to amend the code based on that. Uh, as far as land development regulations, we're also updating the Chapter 80 sign regulations and lastly, uh, continue to administer the city's public art program for any events, um, initiatives, anything that we can help in that, in that area. And then lastly, the department will focus on uh, next areas with regard to planning, a zoning, or licensing of those businesses in that area. Before I turn it over to Manuel Pila, I'd like to uh, thank the entire planning and zoning department staff. They put a lot of work, and they deserve it. Thank you.
Okay, thank you, Javi. Good morning. I'm Manuel Pila, an economic developer for the city, as Javi said. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, for those at home who may not uh, know what economic development is about, the, the Economic Development Division of the Planning and Zoning Department assists with the analysis, the planning, implementation, development of projects relating to economic growth, community development, and redevelopment areas in Doral. And uh, the division builds relationships with business and government, administers grants, uh, capitalizes on opportunities, and seeks out new businesses, wherever they may be. The Economic Development Division promotes the city of Doral as a business-friendly destination and assists businesses interested in opening and relocating to or expanding their operations in the city. Now, there are many ways we do that. We offer orientation, economic data, a site selection aid, and, and individualized assistance to new businesses, as well as helping existing businesses with information, education, grants, um, promotions, uh, orientation, really whatever they need uh, to grow and thrive. Um, the division generates targeted leads through advertising, media, messaging, and promotions in close collaboration with public affairs. Uh, those actionable leads come from uh, an intelligence network that includes business organizations, investment advisors, partner institutions, lenders, realtors, residents, and of course the mayor and council members. Accomplishments this year, uh, as indicated, but it bears repeating, uh, we hired and integrated a new business outreach coordinator into the Economic Development Division, uh, therefore growing by 100%. And I want to thank you all for the opportunity. And I want to thank uh, Nick, who hit How's the ground we? running. <laughs> How's we? Yes, sir. Absolutely. And it's very difficult to move a table if you're just one person, but as we figured out last night. <laughs> um, also, we coordinated the Sister City signing event with the Way, the Dominican Republic, in conjunction with uh, Public Affairs. You see there the, the photograph of, of that event. We hosted the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law Briefing by the U.S. Department of Transportation Office of Small Business uh, Director Shelby Scales, who came down from Washington for that event. Uh, we've been participating in the Aspen Institute Latino Business and Entrepreneurship Initiatives City Learning and Action Lab. It's a national six city campaign to accelerate small business recovery in Hispanic communities. And here it's a 10 member group that is working on creating a one-stop shop uh, for all the uh, economic development organizations in Miami-Dade County where businesses can go and really find all the information in one place and help orient them. Uh, as I said, we've been working with uh, public affairs to uh, tell the Doral story and tell the good news. Uh, we've partnered on uh, various media outreach opportunities. Uh, some of the highlights include the special sections in Invest Miami 2022, the Emerge Americas magazine, uh, Diario Las Americas uh, had a special section, and USA Today, and all these promote the city's business environment. We've also partnered with Public Affairs on the monthly Best of the Best People's Choice promotional campaign uh, featuring Doral popular favorites in a variety of categories and we tend to help them by reaching out to the businesses in those categories to let them know that you know they should get their uh, their people riled up and get them to vote, get them to participate. We also coordinate with public affairs on uh, filming of spend local business profile videos, which have also been a big hit. Uh, they've helped expand the uh, participation in the program to include more than 175 community discounts offered by Doral businesses, kind of full time, and a few others that are uh, seasonal. In business education, uh, some of the highlights uh, throughout this last year, uh, we've worked with uh, excellent partners. Uh, we did two bilingual uh, SBDC at FIU uh, events on the Step Up Your Startup workshops. We did four bilingual Grow with Google seminars with the Google, Google Digital Coach Vicente Pimenta. Um, another highlight was Hiring Solutions in the 305 workshop a few months back with Miami Community Ventures, Career Source, and uh, at Miami Dade College. Uh, the Doral Business Forum in, September, in uh, February with the Beacon Council, Camacol, Enterprise Florida, uh, FIU, Goldman Sachs, and SBDC was also very well attended and I think a, a very successful uh, event. And we did two business workshops with Miami Bayside Foundation, Prospera, uh, Platinum Business Solutions, and the Florida State Minority Supplier Development Council. 
and a Small Business Summit with Camacol, uh, Doral, a Career Source, uh, and a Prosper. Expos and conferences, we were out there at the Emerge Americas uh, conference, participated in the Veristel Institute's Daring to Leap Global Online Symposium as a panelist, uh, along with the president of the uh, World Council on City Data. We participated in the Aruban Expro Desk's Unleash Your U.S. Potential Workshop for Aruba and Curacao Women Entrepreneurs, um, and in Kamakos Hemisphere Congress just yesterday. In business assistance grants, we were able to award 157,000, over 157,000 in grants and donations to businesses, nonprofits, and educational institutions in this fiscal year. Uh, we awarded $50,000 in facade improvement grants, uh, 22,550 in CBO grants, uh, 72,000 in PTSA grants, and uh, we donated over $12,000 in school supplies. And all this information also is now available on a site uh, that gives the, the public all the information about all the grants. So it's uh, very open and transparent right there on the website. Uh, we're also able to publish um, uh, some great data by working with organizations like FIU, the Beacon Council, World Council on City Data, Greater Miami Convention and Visitors Bureau, and of course through CoStar, we're able to gather data, create reports, and offer uh, market information to residents, businesses, and investors, and by also and also to show them what some of these events are about, what we've been doing, and what's coming up. Uh, we produced two quarterly reports in collaboration with Public Affairs, uh, one that we just put out last week, and we'll be giving you some print copies uh, today. And uh, we supported IT to gather data and promote the city's new uh, ISO certifications. And in terms of international relations, uh, we've hosted some uh, business diplomatic trade and cultural events uh, this year. Uh, Rimo Doral, a cultural event co-produced with the Rhythm Foundation, featured musicians from Brazil and Venezuela, it was live streamed to over 66,000 viewers, which is a record for us. And the division participated in trade missions with the Florida Foreign Trade Association, Fundacion Líderes Globales, uh, from uh, all sorts of countries uh, that came here to, to visit us, uh, Honduras, Ecuador, Panama, uh, Bolivia, uh, many different countries are represented uh, here throughout the year. Uh, and finally, we were able to go out there and spread the good news uh, and support new businesses that were opening their doors. Uh, we had a lot of uh, ribbon cuttings, uh, over 30 ribbon cuttings, uh, just in the last few months. And you see some of those, uh, uh, some of those events that happened uh, there smiling, uh, happy people investing in the city of Doral. And we thank you all for supporting uh, these businesses, these events. Some upcoming, uh, upcoming objectives and initiatives. Uh, we look in this next fiscal year uh, to complete and publish the five-year update of the FIU Economic Assessment Study, uh, to launch the Legacy Business Program, honoring longtime businesses in commemoration of Doral's 20th anniversary. We'll have to do that in April. Uh, launch approved, uh, hopefully approved, the proper program that is before you uh, now in an ordinance to facilitate some temporary indoor retail installations in the city. Uh, we're going to coordinate a series of collaborative sister cities activities throughout the year uh, that we've met with the, all the sister cities recently and hope to incorporate the new sister city as well. Uh, we publish web, a web page for the Doral Decor District and hope to do that also soon for the Downtown Doral Arts District. Uh, we just want to make sure we put in some uh, some of the upcoming um, improvements on that before we put it out there. And uh, to complete the economic element of the comprehensive plan in this next year, bring it to the public and also to bring it to the council. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. That's a recap of uh, this fiscal year. For economic thank, development. thank you, Manny. Are there any questions, comments? I have questions, Javi. Uh, Okay, I have two questions. You're gonna, are you going to do it during council comments? You don't want to tell them now? Yeah, I'm going to tell everybody. Yeah. Okay. All right, she's going to hold off the comments till her council comments to give you. I have questions. Um, number one, can I get a copy of your a recap presentation? Absolutely, sir. Okay. That's number one. Uh, uh, number two is um, 
when you when you did that total number of parks acreage for the future, mm -hmm. did you at all look at the potential of uh, that 50 some odd pay acre parcel that we're working on on the corner of 107th and the potential of the other parcel uh, that Lennar has a little bit further to the north? Uh, not for this, uh, this year's CIE. Once we have a, a final d determination by the district, the South Florida Water Management District, on the 50 acre parcel, uh, we can add that. In the next uh, five years, four years, by 2026, Parks has a, uh, an estimate of 33.8 acres that are going to be added. Uh, that, that puts the city level of services in a deficiency of 86. However, that's not counting private parks. Um, no, I got that. I mean, I, but if you add, at the very least, the 50 some odd acre one and the, the, the other reserve that, that uh, Lennar has eventually, uh, that would be an additional 130 some odd acres that if you can make them as passive green space would still be parkland. The, the, the west parcel on 1774, 50 acres, the, the other preserve area, um, the application that they, had, they have submitted, uh, it's estimated somewhere around 50 acres. So those two parks, if uh, we can be successful at that conversion, that will put the city over exceeding the level of service standards. Okay. Well, I would I would proffer that you should continue to work on that. I won't be here, but I'll be as a resident, reminding you to try to do it. Um, the other thing, as far as uh, the annexation area, uh, obviously uh, you're going to have uh, <laughs> your hands full. Uh, because some of the new areas have really are not um, areas that are that have really gone through the process of what we've done for the last 20 years. So are you getting ready for that, or how are you guys getting ready for that? We're ready. As soon as we get the green light, uh, we can start the planning, comprehensive plan, land development code, zoning map, and licensing is uh, has proactively reached out to the county to figure out how many businesses in total are in those areas so we can help uh, strategize in order to uh, reach out to the businesses and ensure that they're informed that they also need a BTR from the city of Doral. Okay. All right. Well, I, I would suggest you already got a yellow light. Um, anyways, uh, you guys, and I'm going to ask you a couple. Now, these are two comments uh, that I wanted to make. And number one, you know, you probably uh, your department and uh, uh, building have the toughest jobs uh, just because uh, the people don't understand the process. It's one people always complain. <coughs> And, and sometimes for valid reasons, but most times they just don't understand the rules. But uh, on the BTRs, you know, we had an experience uh, this past year where a whole building didn't have, um, you know, any any BTRs. All right, what are we doing? And are you got to do this with code compliance to make sure that doesn't happen again? Uh, what we did was we created an Excel spreadsheet of all the BTRs that, that have an expired status. We have provided the list to code compliance, and they have visited all, all the addresses. There are about uh, 2,300 businesses and locations that they visited. Um, and uh, we're currently in the renewal for this year. Uh, it's going uh, a lot better. Uh, the, the, res the business owners understand that there's a online system. It's easier for them to pay. Um, and um, I know that next year, uh, with the assistance of code, uh, we'll be able to ensure that the entire city is, um, is aware of the business tax receipt from the city perspective, because most of them do obtain a county BTR, right. but not the city. But I can tell you that, you know, having my law practice in Coral Gables, Coral Gables is an excellent job of reminding me that you're also required to have a Coral Gables license. And I think over here, sometimes we kind of forget it. Uh, and, I, and I, you know, it, it's important that, that you do that. Um, and finally, the only other comment I'd make is, uh, and, I, and I think you guys do a very good job in your reports when you give it to council, but at some point, um, maybe there should be some information on letting people understand what vested property rights are, because there's a tremendous assumption, uh, especially in that uh, special world called the internet, from residents that uh, property rights somehow have been permanently extinguished. And, you know, it, it, it would be good for people to understand that, uh, you know, people who own property have rights, just like they have a property rights on their home, so do other people, because sometimes when we go through this process, there is a um, uh, lack of understanding of uh, what vested rights are already. And uh, as you move forward, my only suggestion to you would be 
to make sure that uh, when you have a geographic defined area where there's that difficult uh, uh, difficulty in understanding what what uh, you know uh, what designations are and what vested rights are that you maybe put something on the internet to remind people uh, or put it on the web page I mean to remind people that you know uh, your hands are limited also in what uh, what you can do when you make these recommendations. So that would just be a suggestion for the future because that's always been one of the hardest things for people to understand. And I think it continues to be as we grow uh, a uh, something that, 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 and you do a great job, by the way, you guys do a great job when you, uh, when you, uh, when you provide reports to council, but I think some sort of explanation that, that explains what people, to people what this is and in layman's terms, by the way. So uh, it would be a good thing, but thank you anyways to both of you. And I think the economic development's gone well. And thank you, Manny, for being at these uh, ribbon cuttings, even on Saturday nights. Uh, so, uh, but it's important that we keep on sending the businesses the message that the reason why we have the lowest millage rate in the county now and always had one of the lowest uh, is because of the fact that uh, businesses, the balance between industrial, commercial, and residential must be maintained. Because uh, that's that's the reason why the residents benefit. So thank you both. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments, questions? There being none. Thank you very much. <coughs> hey, Madam Clerk. Next item. Mayor's report. Okay, my report. Uh, um, you all know uh, about the annexation. We're waiting to hear from uh, the county on the documentation. I'll turn that over to Lewis a little bit later if he so chooses to speak on that. Uh, I'm headed to my final United States Conference of Mayors Leadership Conference, which is here, so I'm not heading too far, uh, except uh, driving my car uh, in the next couple of days. Uh, and I look forward to certainly can uh, be there at the, the, the final event. The other thing I would tell you is we have Mr. Manager, I sent you an email yesterday, I'd remind you, I'd remind staff, the best uh, practices conference for the Miami-Dade County League of Cities, which I am the president of this year again, is uh, coming up in October. I hope that uh, some of you go. It's the best opportunity, forget about the elected officials, to spend time with colleagues from other 33 other municipalities in the county to learn about uh, the process um, and learn from them and share your ideas and uh, you know exchange ideas. And we're back doing it in person, which is great. So uh, finally, uh, I think one of the legislative aides' his birthday's coming up on the 24th. Armando, where are you? We don't want you to forget. We don't want any legislative aide to be sensitive about these things. So happy birthday in anticipation uh, you know, to you. So, and that is my report. Council comments? Mr. Mayor. Yeah. Go to the vice mayor, then we'll go over to the council. Oh, council okay. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, just two two items, actually. Um, one of them is for staff, so if anybody um, can get this to me. One of the things that we discussed before was expanding the, the freebie fleet um, to cover a larger area within our city, city, and I had brought it up to staff that Tesla has now partnered so we can expand and provide our residents with a larger network. So if anybody can just, I don't know if anybody here can give me a quick update as to where we are with that, Mr. Manager, um, and if we're moving forward with that um, quickly. I know everybody's looking at each other. Rita. <laughs> Thank you. Good morning, everyone. So yes, we are preparing an agenda item for next council meeting for the, the extension of that contract for a one-year term for, with the Teslas to cover a greater area in the city. Love it. Thank you so much. Excited for that next meeting. And then um, the last but certainly not least, um, I want to formally, because I know we met before, but it wasn't a formal council meeting. I do want to congratulate our um, commissioner-elect. Um, it wasn't easy, and, and we certainly are very happy, and I think this, every resident in the city of Doral should know this because Drow is one of the largest areas and contributors to that district in Miami-Dade County. And this is very important for all of us to have great representation. We see what can happen when we don't. We've dealt with several issues um, this past year 
uh, including the issue with Kvanta, including the annexation of Medley. And I am very excited to have a, a true representative of the residents and the businesses in our, in our um, district. I also wanted to thank the voters and all the residents that volunteered in this last election. And I think a lot of them realized how important it is to participate. And I am very proud that everybody proved that it's not about money. Uh, and it's not about what campaign finances are. It's about really electing true leaders in our community, leaders with experience, integrity, and ethics. And Mr. Mayor, you represent all of that, and I'm very proud to call you our commissioner very soon. Uh, and thank you, everybody out there, for proving other people wrong. It's about what's right. It's not about what's easy. So thank you, everybody, and I look forward to, um, to working with you. Thank you, and I'm not leaving Doral for those out on TV. I'm still here. I'm not moving. So, friend and foe, I'll see you again. <laughs> My vice mayor, thank you for the comments, Councilwoman. Well, congratulations too. Even though we hug each other and we all were able to celebrate with him in the Intercontinental that night. Um, I want to thank the different departments, to all the departments actually, for everything that they do. But I know that this month uh, the, um, the Department of Public Affairs, yeah, the Economic One, have been working very close uh, with my office, being able to host the SDGs where we have many people that came out, and also the um, Technology Department uh, as well, giving that report and for us to be able to be the only one actually in the nation to have the Patheon uh, certification so for the WCCD so thank you so much because I know that you've been working um, diligently for us to be able to host uh, all the visitors that we have from not just around the nation but also international so thank you so much last night was great also well, when we have the uh, actually the the chamber from the president for the chamber from Madrid also from Bolivia that was here and many other uh, business owners um, that came uh, for the Congress that you actually represent us. So thank you so much for all of that. And to the office of the city manager, thank you again, and our attorney as well, and our deputy, thank you so much, because I know that as soon as we have any issues, any um, resident contact us right away, you're on top of trying to find solutions with the uh, hand of the different directors and the staff. Uh, also for uh, human resources, thank you so much for assisting us yesterday, uh, for us to be able to have completed our um, HR, all of that that we needed to have and their enrollment again. So thank you so much because I know that they came to help us, each of us in our office. So say thank you, Rita, and for the staff as well. So thank you so much to all of you and city clerk as well. We don't <laughs> want to leave, don't so leave Connie out. <laughs> because when we call right away, you answer that thing. Thanks for any issue that we have in the city. Okay, the owner. Any other comments from council? If there aren't, Madam Clerk, then let's go on to the city next City manager's time. report. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Mayor, council members, Madam Clerk, Mr. Attorney. Uh, as you know, the budget, uh, the first budget hearing for the fiscal year 2023 took place on September 6, 2022, and the second budget hearing will be held on September 21st uh, 2022 for final approval. At this time, I would like to congratulate our IT department uh, and uh, Gladys in particular that were recognized by the State Tech Magazine and listed the city of Doral as one of the 30 state and local governments and IT influencers worth to follow in 2022. Uh, Gladys is the CEO of Doral she has served uh, since 2015, orchestrating business solutions while controlling cost and managing risk. She recently oversaw her city's green data uh, center, consolidating all, also leads Doral Smart City Initiatives. So I wanted to thank our IT department, thank Gladys for putting us on the map. And back in May of May 24, 2021, Mr. Mayor, you asked me to. Uh, take a challenge and come and, and uh, uh, deal with uh, a little bit of an issue of, with uh, Energov. Uh, I appreciate all your support and the council support uh, to try to resolve issues that we've had, uh, the nightmares with the, 
that the citizens have uh, experienced with the integration of Energov, and I wouldn't be able to uh, have completed, and I think we've come a long way. So, but we never did it alone, and we teamed up, and, and, and I think part of leading and, and managing is being able to identify where and who can help us get to where we need to be. So I, I would, I wish to yield any further of my time to our partner, uh, Plant Moran, uh, Christopher Blau, uh, our energy, our Energov uh, consultants to cover our accomplishments since May of uh, 2021, uh, where we're at, where we went, where were we at back then, and where we're at today. So I think uh, it's only I yield my time to him so he can go ahead and take the floor and give you uh, some positive news, uh, which is always good. We're still going to get questions, Christopher, but uh, despite yielding time, but go ahead. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Manager. Appreciate your time. Um, good morning, everyone. My name is Chris Blau. Uh, I'm a senior manager on a, a team that represents a public sector technology and operations practice at Plant Moran. Uh, Plant Moran, uh, if you may not know, uh, is an audit tax advisory firm. Uh, we have management consulting practice within that team. Uh, we are the 12th largest in the United States in just terms of revenue. Um, my practice, for which I'm a member, has a national um, technology uh, uh, advisory group. It is through the lens that I'm sharing this insight with you because I work with a lot of different communities who have worked with not just Energov, but different permitting enterprise land management systems that handle code, licensure, uh, renewals of all sorts, uh, and then receipt millions of dollars of revenue. Uh, I'm currently working with uh, folks at West Palm Beach, um, also with Cape Coral, and a number of other jurisdictions across the country. Um, so today, uh, and for sharing back with you the assessment findings, uh, I just wanted to share the lens by which our team is giving you feedback. Because there are a lot of different organizations today that are undertaking this effort uh, in different ways. And uh, we're going to share with you what the city has done here uh, that I think has been very positive for you to take uh, uh, credit for, as well as to be aware of how we're working with our citizens today. Okay, I have three points to share with you this morning. The first is I wanted to uh, demonstrate the commitment that has been undertaken for the past year uh, for the city's plan of action that outlined what we were going to do to repair and to stabilize the Intergov land management system. Uh, the second, I wanted to also highlight uh, the team accomplishments representing seven different departments, 50 different stakeholders that are using this business system in addition to all of your constituents. They are represented here this morning uh, and they have been uh, very involved of the past year in working with us to make sure that we have a pulse on the situation and are able to make incremental improvements. And lastly, I wanted to share with you what are some of the things we're doing to accelerate the ability of the city to respond to customer needs in the future. So as we know, technology is not static, it is the dynamic. And if we're not integrated today, uh, as you have found, uh, we will be very integrated tomorrow. And so the tools that we turn to to expedite how we do business with our constituents are going to be even further integrated, and we're going to look to get more from them. So those are the three points I'm going to share. Uh, and when we began this effort, we took on an assessment, and that assessment included those business areas that I just shared, uh, and it really broke it into five different steps. Uh, the first step was to secure the resource commitments, not just of the city's team, but also that of your technology partners from Tyler Technologies. Uh, and I wanted to just mention the sponsorship that we received, both from the city manager's office, as well as all the department directors made this possible. Uh, if you're not aware, uh, this, uh, the, the folks at Tyler Technologies represent a $1.6 billion organization. It is a publicly traded company, and the city, man uh, city manager has been on a call uh, with two executives of that group weekly for the past um, 10 months. Uh, and so the attention from the leadership of Tyler Technologies, as well as the commitment of your city team, as well as the insights that our Plant Moran Consulting Group have put forward, have represented a, a strong commitment to make this process a lot more effective for everyone involved. Second, we committed to upgrading to the current release of the solution. And as many of you are aware, uh, sometimes upgrading uh, on an application, maybe on our iPhone uh, or on a tablet, looks pretty simple. But when you do it with a land management system that connects to over 200 business processes, you don't do that overnight. And so to that end, we've created a process by which those can, uh, integrations can be tested. And the impacts to the customer, as well as to the staff who work together, are evaluated before those releases are made. 
And so to that point, we've upgraded and completed that upgrade to the 2021 release uh, with the intent of going to 22 here in April. Okay, so you've got to be on the modern uh, platform to be supported properly. And so that was a significant achievement. Third, we plan for the change. So that means is that the people that are involved today did not represent the vast majority of people who were involved in the initial implementation. There was some turnover. Uh, so we wanted to make sure the folks who are now participating understood what we were going to accomplish. We set out a plan. We did a number of interviews. And to that end, we started to execute by securing specific resources, highly tenured to resources from Tyler Technologies to engage. And uh, with Plant Moran and the project management team that I'm working with, with the city staff, we have been meeting weekly and in working with uh, experienced Tyler personnel to reconfigure in places as well as stabilize some of the configuration items. And to date, I'm gonna share with you 39 different change proposals. I won't go into detail, uh, but to demonstrate the fact that these changes are making significant improvements. And I'm gonna give you some evidence of that in a minute. And lastly, how are we gonna make sure that we can continue to elevate the service levels for the community? Right? How can we be responsive? And so to that end, those five stabilization areas break into optimization. So while this is a system, it's a technology, it's not just about the technology. It's about the people in the process who engage. And so to that end, while we might have upgraded, we know that the enhancements we're making involve process, people, and technology. So a lot of the changes we presented, both through uh, the different business units represented here, uh, reflect their business goals of their customers and the people that they serve so that we could get those into the system. Of those 39, 16 are in effect and the balance of those are being put into effect in the next two months. So you're gonna to continue to see incremental improvements. So uh, stay tuned. Uh, third point, elevating staff capacity to serve means that the staff roles within the system involve a specific training regimen. Uh, I am working with three other communities right now that are implementing this very software. Some of those communities have experienced turnover, like three CIOs and three project managers in three years. The impacts and turnover within public sector today have been significant with the clients and in all of uh, local government coming out of the recession, or excuse me, the pandemic. And to that effect, we wanna make sure that the people who are operating the system today have the, have the right training for the role that they're in. That way they can use the system in an optimal way and they can guide the customer to find what it takes to get the answer that they need. The fourth element is integrating service delivery. There are seven departments in the room here today and no one department can make a change without impacting another. So to be able to integrate the change management process working with the CIO through the office and all the departments coming together on a regular basis when they go to make changes, they know what those implications are, they test for them and they validate them. And then when they're rolled out to the public, the public understands through uniform, uniform uh, communication that we're getting them the information that they need and if we need to make adjustments, we can respond. And that's the last part, is the service level measurements uh, that demonstrate that we are actually processing information through the system, we're not bypassing it. Okay, so this is something as a consultant I look for. How many systems of record exist that aren't part of the main system that a community uses? Would you believe that I find 20 to 30 different systems of record typically when I walk into a jurisdiction that manages the permitting code enforcement licensing process? And that's probably low. You're working with one system of record that's tying all that together. So that's very powerful, but it takes a commitment to manage. And so to that end, what are we managing for? It'll be a topic I'm gonna to bring up here in a second. So the performance, manage, performance measures that I'm sharing with you right now, these are things that have happened within the past six months. Since we've started Institute the Changes, we thought it would be an, a good illustration to show you where we are today and where we've come from. Okay, so today, um, as was reported earlier, um, we've had 5,000 VTR renewals completed, and over 87% of those have been online self-service by the citizen. And that's a significant achievement. And so we know that deadline's coming uh, at the end of this month, and so I think it was noted earlier there were about 7,000 total within the city uh, uh, from last year. So we're expecting uh, those numbers to increase further. In terms of code enforcement, uh, over 4,000 code cases were opened, uh, over 1,400 lien searches were fulfilled in same day in most cases. 95% of the time, those are being fulfilled same day. Most jurisdictions can barely do three-day turnarounds, let alone seven. Okay, so that's a, a very significant achievement. In terms of planning and zoning, 
Uh, you can see the numbers here in terms of, you know, over the, the building permit use reviews as well as zoning only and site plans are all being pushed through the system and are coming through. And then in terms of building, uh, we've had 4.1 million in fees receded to date uh, from March to today. Uh, you can see the inspections, but there's an interesting story to be sharing here because a year, about a year ago, we were looking at turnaround times that were somewhere between four to six weeks for an initial plan review. Today, it's on average of 10. 10 days. That puts you about the same mark as Clearwater, Florida, which has some very high standards. Port St. Lucie, some of the faster growing jurisdictions, uh, you are doing very well in terms of your performance in comparison to your peers. And they're using the system to do the work that is necessary. Okay, so we went from four to six weeks, 35 day turnarounds to 10. Uh, and that's, that's a big testament to the folks who are leveraging the system to do that work. Also, wanted to mention uh, that the backlogs for plan review have uh, fallen from 300 to about 70, which is pretty significant. So that's what's in the queue to get done so we can uh, be able to keep that, that 10 day turnaround uh, possible. And then in terms of code enforcement, um, you know, just through some of the changes they made to automate some of their processes, it, it gave them back 60 hours in terms of time a year. Now that's just one change. And we've also identified some other returns that could put us in the order of uh, several FTEs when you start looking at efficiency gains just by being able to automate certain functions. So that really comes to a commitment to incorporate some of these measures that you're seeing uh, into those of the mayor's uh, both dashboard as well as the transparency portal the city uses. So really great resources. Uh, Yeah, I'll cut off. Okay, very good. <laughs> okay, um, so three points uh, three. that we wanted to leave you with this morning. Uh, the first is we want to make sure all staff achieve proficiency within the first 90 days of coming into employment. Um, this is something that um, we will be presenting and the tools will be in place uh, for new staff to be up to speed uh, so that they can best serve the customer. Uh, second, uh, to make sure we can translate system enhancements that are like technology driven in terms of customer success. Uh, and this is a big deal today because the customer is going to so many channels to get their information that we need to know what channel they're using to better service them. And sometimes the methods that they turn to aren't necessarily the ones you're supporting. <laughs> and so uh, that's, that's number two. And number three uh, is to continue as you are today, uh, the performance measures that are reported to the city manager's office that roll up from the departments and then come to council, uh, those measures help us tell a story and it's not about being a data geek, it's about being able to tell how the story helps a citizen. And sometimes there's a gap there, and that's one that can continually be improved, and it is one from a performance management perspective that will really help drive the city's success. So with that, I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have, and uh, thank you for your support. Questions for Chris, uh, Councilman Cabrera? Yeah. Um, the 70 plan set backlog, which is, first of all, I want to thank you and administration and staff for all the hard work and the 19 years of being in the city, I don't think we've ever encountered something as challenging as this and as complicated as this. And part of it, I think, was it was rolled out improperly um, and other things that I have concerns about. But when we're talking about 70 plan setback, I know that was a big issue. And we'd have people come to the front clerk and they'd like, you know, they were overwhelmed. Are we talking about um, just any stage of the plan review? Uh, is generally we have 70 in line and, and you're saying the 10 day turnaround time on average per discipline or for the whole set of plans? I think it was for average. I may have to defer to Jane for the okay. statistics there, uh, but I'll make sure that they're accurately represented. Good morning, everybody. The 70 just happened to be um, one number that we took from say like electrical um, that okay. we have in queue. So overall we're getting about 200 applications a week. We're issuing about 130 permits a week. So okay. that's more or less where it's at. And the 10 day, um, I think that when I looked at the mayor's dashboard a couple of days ago, we're at like 6.98 days. Um, that's total uh, yeah, for first time round review. So amazing, wonderful. Um, there's little things I know that, like I was hearing complaints about that someone would, that something would be finally approved and um, 
the the invoice would be to pay it and then they'd pay it and but someone had to manually go look for the payment it wasn't actually triggering mm -hmm. a a notice is that been fixed because that obviously is a big problem yes we now have um, something enabled called tasks so the clerks are all notified when a something is paid and the permit is then issued. It's not an automatic process, they are notified. And also the uh, sister departments have also set up their uh, clerical teams for their individual intake processes that don't necessarily have to come through building. So that's okay. been set up as one of the So basically it's still manual, but the, uh, there's a task notice or someone knows they need to go. Is there any way to automate something like that? Are we looking into that possibly? Mm -hmm. Not really? It needs to be reviewed to make sure it's... <laughs> yeah, we, we, we put a lot of ideas on Tyler Community and then I send it out to not only our community, but other stakeholders, Cape Coral, Marco Island, other people that use the system. And so when you get something upvoted, um, that puts it on Tyler's radar a lot faster um, for the next level of upgrade, so. All right, and I have one other question, Mr. Manager, is, is one of the things that concerns me about this is, I mean, Plant Moran seems to have done a great job in this process of cleaning this up, but what responsibilities has eGov taken for, I mean, having to have you gone through this whole mess and obviously additional cost, are we dealing with that? I mean, I won't have to get into deep details, but it just concerns me that this has happened even. And what's EGO's responsibilities to it, if any? Ego and if it's a complicated Tyler. answer, don't worry about it. Well, no, it's not a, it's complicated, but it's very simple. Uh, to be realistic, uh, you know, I meet every week with the vice president <laughs> and 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 one of the uh, presidents of, of, of the division for Energov, and and w our our preface of our our meetings is that you know we are partners in this and we want to be their uh, uh, their 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 best practice uh, partner, and you know believe it or not, there's companies in their sales and and they're contacting our our departments to uh, for help and i think that's a long way to go where 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 we were at to where we're at today right. and the commitment that they've given us and you know the flaws that they have in their system that obviously you know their system has faulted in in uh, positions where you know uh, where their data is stored and our data is stored uh, they are making some significant changes to their programs as a result of what we've done here. And, and we really have been a, a, an example on how to make this program work after the catastrophe that the, we, we had. Okay. And, you know, uh, the, with the guidance of Plan Moran and, and the team that we have here today and every one of our directors that are committed to include, you know, the manager, manager's office and, and your support, We've been able to, to, you know, actually, <laughs> I have this guy, the president of that company of the whole uh, southeast region of the United States <laughs> that I meet with an hour every week with Gladys and myself, and, and you know, we're pushing them and, and calling to carpet on, on the deficiencies of their programs. So, yeah, they're, they're committed. As a matter of fact, I was, I was uh, with Chris uh, earlier where I said, you know, at one point, I'm going to start asking them for a reduction or a credit because we're, kind of their, we're their ambassadors. Be and I, I told we them. Started, we should start a side consulting business. No, like actually, it. so because, you know, uh, you know, we're helping Cape Coral. I know that Jane's very influential in, into how and the workflow, the simpl simplification of our workflow is internal right now. Okay, one of, the ex uh, one of the things that I've been pushing is, yeah, this internal process is great, but what are we doing for the s simplification for the citizens to deal with? Okay, so the internal process right now and where we're at today is the, the, um, the system to work and, and make it less for us to do and, and, and become more efficient. But how simple is it for the customer? And right. one of the perfect examples is the BTR. Uh, you know, I had a, a person call and say, listen, this is, you know, why do I have to go? I'm a one-time user. Right. And, you know, when we sat and we covered and the team sat together, uh, we finally made it a one point, you know, a click 
and put your invoice in and you don't have to go through that whole Tyler. If you're, if, if you're a contractor, there's, there's issues that, that you know, you're gonna have to deal with and you're gonna have to go into our customer service portal. Okay, but at one point, it's gotta be simple for the citizens. Agree. And, and that's what we're working on. Right now, this is the back end. Our, our, our front end and, and what's gonna come toward is, you know, yeah, we have great videos, but a CEO or company or a one-man business can't sit there and watch a video for, for an hour Agreed. to figure out how to do this. Agreed. And that's where our next step comes into play Thank you. and make it simple, okay? There's challenges. Uh, Energo's support to us, I think, you know, we made it very clear that there's a lot of people, the Gables, that I've gotten calls from and how to implement these things. And I, and I, I told them, I said, listen, I could be your biggest advocate or I'm going to go and to all the conferences and stand there with a sign saying <laughs> no energy. <laughs> you laugh, but you could ask my, my witnesses here. I, I believe I did tell them that. And I will go to every tech conference and let them know anything but. And that's where we're, we're at. But, you know, they've responded and they've really, you know, they want to make it a success. As a matter of fact, I don't know, they're hosting uh, servers now. They're going to make a, a significant uh, change into the hosting, which is probably the problem we've had with the uploading and the, the issues that we've had uh, that the customers have had. Okay. And, and the numbers have to be very uh, quantified. And, you know, that 10 day turnaround. Okay, I thought, wow, 10 days. Yeah, but let's, that's 10 days once the plans are uploaded. How long it takes them to upload, we haven't been able to, to see or, or, or capture those. And I know that the, the, the mayor is, and, and council has always said about met, met, metrics and, and what we need and to show, you know, the numbers are there. They, they're, they're there on, on the progress that we've done. And, and if you put the numbers from back in, in May 24th, 2021 to forward, we've come a long way. I remember every day, each and every one of you had major, major complaints on, on this whole system. Those complaints have diminished to a bare minimum to be realistic as, as, the, as the changes go in in the back end. On the front end, we could probably become a little better and uh, a little bit more customer friendly, which is my goal. Uh, but I think, you know, with the direction of Plan Moran and the commitment from every, every uh, director, because I've sat in meetings with all the directors and I told them, log in there and you become a customer and you tell me what the problems are. And that's how the BTR issues came into play and, and made it simple. You know, are we where we need to be? No. Are the workflows that, that, that uh, have we significantly improved our workflows? Absolutely. Can we say that Entergov's support to us has been above and beyond? Yes. Are they making adjustments because they're learning as we're going on? And I, I guarantee you that their upgrade on their servers are going to be, uh, I think, a positive thing. I mean, we've been down a significant amount of time. Okay. And, you know, that's something that uh, Chris put up there but didn't cover on the on the uh on his presentation is that you know we were out down o over 111 hours yeah okay that's the truth you know we have nothing to hide on that that is part of and and has Entergov dealt with it yeah they, they're dealing with it because you know if we're down a significant amount of time i'm calling you know i get a call from gladys and i'm calling uh greg in 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 uh, maine and tell him I'm down and how, how, how long is it going to be, you know, to be honest with you, engaged? Yeah, every, every department director is engaged. Every department director knows the system. And if they don't, I've challenged each and every one of them. And in order for us to be and work as a team, you got to know the product that you have. Okay, and it starts from the top. And I've tried to log in and create in my own account as a, in the customer service uh, portal. I've done the business uh, uh, tax receipts. And you know what? Uh, Jane did a great job. You know, and, and initially taking, taking this approach and coming in, all our staff was programmed for failure. 
because there's nobody, and I, anybody who asked me, uh, for us to, for someone to implement this thing on their own, is crazy. And and we did that, and we integrated everything and everything at once, and it blew in, it blew up in our face. So uh, the reality is that that you know what they did, and you know the credit to to the whole process and everything they did, they did an outstanding job. But now to come back and recognize that there's workflows that have to be fixed, not only on our end, but with Energov. And Energov has recognized, I mean, they put a team of, of their top programmers because we have the watchdog over there that, that is on them. He seems like a nice guy. Huh? <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. And you know, at the end of the day, I think, I think you know, we're at a, a good place uh, well, I, I think I think <clears throat> the positive. I mean, life is not perfect. Problems happen, and I think in every like every dimension of life, it's how you react to problems and how you deal with them and find solutions. I'm said it to you personally. I've said it to you, I've said it to people publicly, and uh, I want to thank you for your leadership because again, you walked into the city in probably one of the most challenging times, but you've taken a common sense, logical hard, intense approach to every, not just this, but to every solution or every situation we have. And it's not common in government. And it's, and it's been refreshing and, and rewarding and, and inspired our staff to, to you know, rise to the occasion and work and, and even our consultants. So I, I want to thank you, the staff, the consultants, everybody. Because again, a year and a half ago, I, I'm not sure any of us could see the end of this tunnel. And, and it has been improving little by little. I, I applaud you for your next approach, which I think is critical, like you're saying, um, there's a lot of people that are that are just one timers that can get lost in a maze, and that's who we need to simplify for. The people that are large developers that have entire teams, it's they figure out their way through it. But the, the one timers, <clears throat> it's the critical part, and it's a great part. We're a small business community and residential community, so um, we need to adapt to that. So thank you for everything you're all doing, and thank you, Mr. Manager, and our city attorney. I know. <laughs> the and we're not at the end of the tunnel. We're still in the middle of the tunnel. I know, but we're, <laughs> as long as we're, we're going in the right direction. <laughs> yeah. But it's, it's a light now. Yeah. Uh, it's not the oncoming train. So. <laughs> Other questions of Chris? Um, or Jane? No, I just wanted to thank you. And, and um, there's a couple things that you mentioned, and the manager nailed it. When um, two things is is using the technology, not just for technology technology's sake, but to allow our officers, our, our staff, our, our people to have more time for customer service and dealing with the day to day. Um, and that's extremely important because a lot of people need that help. A lot of times there's a mis there's misinformation between the contractor they might have um, to the customer <laughs> and the city. They, they get the information through a middle party sure. and they might not be getting the correct information or the entire uh, information. So allowing us to have that extra time to deal directly with the end consumer, that's extremely important. And then the other thing is making it easier to 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 get in online and, and, and uploading those plans and um, and making sure that we do it in an easy and efficient way. So I do want to thank everybody because the improvement has been great. We know this because obviously our phones are ringing a lot less. Um, it's just more for particular um, issues but um, allowing us to do that. And thank you, Mr. Manager, on the BTR, because um, I, I had to deal with that personal issue at home. I wasn't getting the, the calls. I was having to deal with it at dinner time <laughs> when my husband couldn't do any with his BTR. So I really do appreciate it. I appreciate your work and um, continue putting that pressure. And, and like uh, the councilman said, maybe we need to um, work it out where we, um, if, if we're being there, their um, outstanding city to show how they work. Uh, maybe we need to work it out so we get a little bit back from them because uh, once again, we're the leaders in something and I do appreciate it because it's because of you guys out there. So thank you. Oh, thank you so amazing, Jane and, and Vince. Thank you, Vince. Because I know that even though sometimes we don't mention you, you are the one also there with Jane and the entire department. Thank you so much. Amazing, yeah. I got, I got two questions for you, Chris. Um, on the onboarding, uh, is that training regimen uh, simple enough that the person that gets onboarded could learn it relatively easy? Uh, well, it's actually two part. Uh, mm -hmm. The virtual learning labs, which is pretty much kind of a self-guided part one. And there's a part two with actually an individual from the Tyler Technologies group that would actually train on the more complex material. 
So with anything, the more complex the training, the more one-on-one -on -one time that there needs to be. And so we've recommended a carve out of implementation consult training hours from certified Tyler staff. So for the things that are more complex, the yeah. staff have an opportunity to get one-on-one -on -one attention. Okay, and then the, I guess the second question would be, uh, um, somebody's out, you know, the redundancy. So are we are we taking into that account as we move forward? Because yeah. that tends to be the problem in other municipalities. And uh, sometimes in the past we've had it here that if somebody's not here, then yeah. you know there, there's nobody willing to fill in. And so, so so there's two parts to that. The first part is is roles within the system today are being instituted so that there are backup permissions for roles that will stand in for the folks who are away. So okay. an FMLA situation and a person who might be on extended leave, that sort of thing. But then secondly, in 2023, in April, there's a new capability um, that is gonna be introduced for workflow visibility across all of the Tyler products, and it's called Tyler Hub. I'm not the Tyler sales representative, but gotcha. <laughs> Tyler Hub gives you the, the capability to see in the workflow who has the ball. And if that ball is waiting too long, then there's an alert that's sent to say, hey, this has went aging for 10 days. No one's acted on it. We need to move on it. And you'll see other jurisdictions that have uh, used that as kind of a, um, basically a detection tool to make sure that, or maybe five days of inactivity, okay? Right, right. Um, some cities we've worked with, you know, they institute kind of a, um, a waiting component. And if no one answers within five days, it automatically escalates. Okay. So Good those idea. are types of capabilities. Good. Yeah, whatever you set it for. But yes, the kind of a two-part piece. Okay. All right. Thanks. I've got a question. Yeah. The hub is coming online on 2023? 23, correct. There is and, an and But you mentioned also that other cities are using something similar now within Tyler. Yes. Uh, well, so I work with non-Tyler clients, and I work oh, with Tyler clients. Oh, I see, I see. Okay, okay so I'll kind of give yeah. you the full perspective. So I think for those that are non-Tyler clients, important. they're yeah. using that capability. All right, thanks. Well, and before we could go to that piece of the software, um, Munis had to be upgraded. And so that's been implemented, it's being tested, and so that rollout is now in, in that phase of work. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. To be fair, with the issue with the mic, the box actually fell, and then I pick it up and that's the issue with the mic. Right. To be fair. The box is by you, it so. It was not IT. Are you yeah, admitting, we have to move, we have to move the box. admitting to something? Because the box is, is right by you. Still, no, oh, I want to make sure. <laughs> well, there you go, IT. Earlier. Sorry, I sorry to, for taking it out on IT there. For I would a like it to use it earlier, but I couldn't. Okay, okay. Okay. City Attorney's Report. It's working, it's working. Just in time for the City Attorney to give his report. It's still morning. Good morning, Mayor, Council, Vi Madam Vice Mayor, Mr. Manager, and of course, City Clerk. Um, just a couple of items to report on, Mayor. The first is um, at the last uh, Council meeting, I asked for permission to retain an expert to deal with the resource recovery facility in Covanta. Um, the Department of Environment Protection did submit a proposed facility odor control plan for the existing facility. Um, the high points in the plan really deal with uh, in, uh, implementing an air extraction system, bringing in new fast uh, automatic door systems to keep the doors closed, uh, some odor reducing agents. Um, based on some of my preliminary conversations with some experts in the field, in addition to the expert that we retained, um, they feel that some of these uh, measures are gonna have a real noticeable difference on the operation. Um, notwithstanding, we have retained an expert I hope to have the report uh, from our expert, which I will share with the council. Once we have that report, and I've asked, specifically instructed the expert, not only just to review what the Department of Environmental Protection is providing, but if there are additional um, best management practices that we could also request when we sit down with the department to have those ready. Um, we should have a report, hopefully in the next 10 days, and then I will reach out to the department so that we can sit down with the department and essentially engage in the same type of uh, settlement negotiations that we did with waste management to get uh, a settlement agreement. So that's where we are there. Um, in response to uh, the mayor's comment on annexation, 
our office has requested the interlocal agreement. The county attorney's office advises they still haven't finished it. Once we have a draft, you know, we will review and report to the council, but I just don't have it yet on the annexation. But we are we're following up every week and asking for it. Um, to follow up on the mayor's comment regarding parks, the 53 acres, we uh, are working with parks. We're working with the consultant. We're in the design phase, and then we'll be moving towards permitting the 53 acres to make it a passive park. Um, wish I could move it faster, but when you're dealing with design professionals and architects and experts, everybody seems to take a long time, but we are cracking the whip as much as we can on that. Um, those are the, the high ticket items. You know, most of the other items I, I typically report and advise you of, but those are the ones that I'm that are essentially make up my report for today. Mr. Mayor? Go ahead. Um, I, I just, for the record, when we are talking about Covanta, and I want to make it clear so there is no confusion out there, um, we're talking about the current facility and the work that we've been doing in improving the current facilities. Um, uh, let's say, the, the effect that it's had on our residents and businesses. So this is not something where the city is agreeing with a decision that was taken by Miami-Dade County to, keep, to build the new facility there. This is just a matter of improving what's currently there, which we know is not what's going to go in the future, but improving the situation in the next couple of years until a new facility is met, uh, is, is built. That being said, we are still trying to change that from our city and putting it somewhere outside city limits. I also know that there is other groups within our community, um, other community groups that have taken it upon themselves to also fight the decision that was being made by the county, uh, by our commissioners that are currently there, not the ones going in in the future, um, to make sure that that facility is built somewhere else. But I wanna clarify that because I don't want anybody to say that we are trying to just improve what's there and we're okay with what's happened and the decisions that were made by our county commissioners currently, correct? That's correct. Um, they're two separate issues. Um, what we're dealing with is the existing facility had submitted an air permit so that for its continued, for its current operation. We challenge, or there was a challenge, an administrative challenge to that simply because to approve that air permit without putting in cost, you know, control measures to deal with the current odor situation, um, we found to be irresponsible and violating the code. So that's a, so, a totally different issue. The location of the future facility is an entirely different matter. Right. Yeah, and, and uh, that was kind of my point too. And, and even though that's a different matter, and there's been decisions made, I think there's still opportunities. But in the meantime, that'll take a while. And it is important that this facility be the best as possible. I have one point I would like them to look into because the resource recovery, the waste, the energy, the trash, we're burning, whatever you want to call it, always denies it. And I've heard this a lot of times. And when you speak to the residents, it seems to be a valid point, is that on Sundays, supposedly they clean out all the junk. And it's a consistent pattern of anyone that lives south of the plant and southwest particularly. West, I live there. Um, that's the day that's always the worst. And I right. used to live right there in Doral Park. 34 years ago when I moved, and I remember Sundays when I wanted to do the barbecue, it was a West Day. I mean, because we all, we got to remember that we deal with the smell from two, the, the resource or the plant and the the landfill, which are two different issues in a way and different, you know, patterns of wind and all that stuff. But the the famous Sunday keeps being repeated and over and over by people. And again, if you ask the Guanta, they deny it. But yet, um, that's what I've heard over, and I'd like to see if there's any way we could validate that to be possibly the case. Well, there's two ways to validate it. One is the 311 complaints that seem to be very high on Sunday, so we've already got that data. And secondly, it's on our punch list already to address that. I think the fast-acting doors and the air extraction systems, and if they put that kind of equipment in, hopefully it addresses it, but we're going to specifically focus on that issue. Because, I mean, I, was, I remember I was there 27 years ago the first time, and and they have like the negative compression or whatever. And then they had, they, they used to have the automatic closing doors at one time and they had those vinyl curtains. But I've driven by there recently and seen the doors open. Why? I don't know. And it opened for extended periods of time, which obviously makes it the problem worse. And also whatever system they have of the extraction of sucking in, uh, the is maybe significantly outdated. 
yes. and would go a long way. I mean, the advantage there, at least, is it's closed in versus the landfill, which is open. But if the proper equipment isn't in place, and, and then those could be some easy fixes in the meantime until we find the solution, the long-term solution. So the, definitely the Sunday one is a, a big one. And Councilman, the, the medley plant doesn't have activities on Sunday. So if it would smell, it would smell every day of the week. The plant, the Covanta plant, runs seven days, 24 hours. So it's obviously, um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Any other questions of our city attorney comments? Next item, Madam Clerk. City Clerk's report. Um, I have nothing to report. My, my report is attached in the backup. Thank you very much. Are there any, if there are no questions of Madam Clerk, motion to adjourn. Second. I think all in favor say aye. 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 We'll see you back here this afternoon. Let the record reflect. Madam Clerk wants to kick me out. The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the City of Doral Council meeting. Today is Wednesday, September 14th, the year of our Lord, 2022. This is the evening session. Uh, 6.07 p.m. Madam Clerk, if you please go ahead and call the roll. Councilman Oscar Puy Corve. Present. Councilwoman Claudia Mariaga. Present. Councilman Pete Cabrera. Present. Vice Mayor Digna Cabral. Present. Mayor slash Commissioner Elect Juan Carlos Bermudez. Present. Mayor, you have quorum. Will you please rise and face the flag and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible. Okay, on the agenda, order of business. Nothing, Is, sir. Anything? No, sir. Mr. Manager, Mr. Attorney, no. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, if you're here for the first time, welcome. If you're here for the umpteenth time, welcome back. Uh, you will be able to speak today on uh, numerous occasions. First, we will have the public comment portion, general public comments. You can speak to your heart's content on any item, and then any item that is a public hearing, of which there are numbers, I will, I will ask you to speak at that time if you want to speak to that particular item. I would ask you to wait until that item pops up if you're going to speak to that particular item. There are three rules, very basic. Number one, if you're going to speak on the phone, we'd ask you to step outside when you're speaking, as sometimes it's difficult to hear each other if people are speaking too loudly. Number two, there's a clock up there, and for you who are NCAA basketball fans like I am, March of Madness, the buzzer will sound, and I will ask you to start wrapping up your point of view or your opinion at the three minute mark. And finally, uh, you can criticize me, you can criticize my colleagues, you can criticize the administration, you can criticize your spouse, you can criticize your dog or your kids, but you must do it respectfully because if you do not, the gentleman in the back in the dark blue uniform will tap you on the shoulder and ask you to step outside. Uh, it's never happened, but we, for democracy to work, we have to agree to disagree respectfully. So we are going to open up the general public comment portion at this time. And anybody that wants to speak to any item that is not an item uh, that is coming up during the public hearing portion, please come on up. Give us your name and address for the record and give us your opinion in a short, succinct and concise manner. Okay, we don't have the Jeopardy music, but we have five spins of the gavel. Nobody has chosen to speak. Let the record reflect no one has chosen to speak at this time. We can move on now, Madam Clerk, and I believe we begin with a presentation, correct? All right, Mr. Mayor, item 19A, Introduction of State Representative slash Senator-Elect Brian Avila. And today we have our State Representative slash Senator-Elect uh, Brian Avila, a friend and a colleague, and we're very happy to have him here and his staff today. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you to, uh, to the Council. Uh, Mayor, first and foremost, congratulations on, on your election uh, to the County Commission. I look forward to working with you. Uh, you've always been absolutely uh, fantastic to work with, and I look forward to, uh, to seeing you on the dais at the County Commission. Uh, you know, to, to the Council, uh, to the public, just really wanted to come by and say hello. Um, as, as was mentioned, uh, I won uh, election to the Florida Senate without opposition in June. Uh, I'll be sworn in in November, um, but I'm actually doing all the legwork on the front end. 
and making sure that I meet uh, all of the elected officials in their jurisdictions and um, you know, establish that relationship <clears throat> so that you, know, you can contact me at any point in time uh, before I start in my official capacity in November. Um, that way we're, we're able to hit the ground running. Um, this past legislative session was a very successful legislative session. Uh, I was personally able to bring back over uh, $58 million to Northwest Miami-Dade, uh, and that's certainly something that I look forward to doing uh, with Doral, which is my second home. Uh, my in-laws live in Doral, and uh, you know my wife's entire family lives in Doral, so I spend uh, probably more time in Doral than I do in my, in my home city. Uh, so I, I, I definitely um, certainly appreciate your service to this great city, and I look forward to working with each and every one of you. Um, any, any questions, any concerns, uh, I am here to help. And I also brought uh, Alicia Raya, who is my district aide. She will uh, transition uh, to my legislative aide once we get to, uh, to November. So um, anything and everything that we can do, uh, certainly to, to help our community, uh, and to make your lives easier, uh, as well as mine, uh, please feel free to, to reach out to us. Uh, I'm, as the mayor knows, I'm very accessible, and uh, I always put the residents first. Well, thank you. I'm going to call you Senator anyways, not Senator Elect, because it's just a, <laughs> just a little bit uh, from there. Thank you so much for being with us tonight, and uh, I, can, I can speak, uh, obviously, from uh, what the senator said, as state representative is always very available, which is the, the, the one thing... Uh, that uh, it was always appreciated, in particular in Tallahassee, where sometimes it's tough to meander. So thank you for being here tonight, and uh, certainly look forward to working with you. No, thank you, Mayor, and thank you to the council. Uh, it's really, it, it's an honor uh, to be here um, before you and to meet all, you know, I know, I know, I know uh, all of you already, but uh, in, in, in my official capacity, certainly look forward to working with you and, and um, making sure that we bring back some, uh, much needed uh, dollars to our region and certainly to the great city of, of Doral. Congratulations on your election and please write down $10 million for Doral. <laughs> 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 Let's take advantage of the, of the good moment. <laughs> well, I, I, thank I can, you. Thank I, you so much. I can tell you that I, um, I, I certainly put a lot of time and effort, uh, Alicia will tell you, into the appropriations process. Uh, the four municipalities that I currently represent in the Florida House of Representatives, yeah. each four of them received record high funding this past legislative session. Um, you know, so that's that's certainly something uh, that I dedicate a lot of time uh, because it's it's something that I know is very tangible uh, and something that uh, certainly helps you hurts uh, helps you helps me and helps the residents, um, and it's something that uh, has a long lasting positive impact. So, um, you know, I'm looking forward to bringing back those dollars, making sure uh, certainly our region and our great city of Doral uh, gets uh, more than its fair share. Thank you. <laughs> Congratulations again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Well, Senator elect, Senator in a month, so <laughs> nothing like but say it counts. So, thank you very much. Thank you. All right, Madam Clerk. I believe now we go to the public hearings, correct? Correct, Mr. Mayor. Item 20A, a resolution of the Mayor and the City Council of the City of Doral, Florida, approving the co-designation of Northwest 56th Street from Northwest 87th Avenue to Northwest 79th Avenue as Maxwell Waz Way, providing for implementation and providing for an effective date. Okay, we're going to open up the public comment portion. Anybody that would like to speak at this time, please come up your statement. At state, name, state your name and address for the record. Even if we all know who you are, you have to state your name and address for the record. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, my name is Martin Wass, Wass Realty, 5582 Northwest 79th Avenue. Um, I brought this to the city. My, our father, my wife, and my brother is here today. Our, our father is turning 95 in October. We started building out here in 1973 on the corner of 56th Street and 79th Avenue. And uh, a few years ago, uh, Julian, who was the former director, called me because when they were doing the Everglades Park, he asked if I could identify some stuff since I've been around a long time. And I did that, and I gave him a lot of pictures, which I, some of them are in, the, up in that building. But I found uh, yesterday, the other day, uh, a plat from Section 22, which is 58th Street to 41st Street from the Palmetto to 87th Avenue from 1986, which I made copies for everybody, which shows the white course, part of Coger Center, who I met the pleasure of meeting Ira Coger many years ago, and 
old country club apartments on 79th Avenue, yeah. Ma Grundy's, and <laughs> you're going, you're really going back. I know Herbats and mm -hmm. uh, and some warehouses and a lot of dirt roads in the area, which I made copies for you, and I hope you all take in consideration everything. We built uh, 18 properties within this one section uh, since 1973. So I have copies for everybody, and I would like thank to you so much, bring Brian. everybody thank copies. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Oh, thanks. It's very cool. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Martin. Thank you so much. Anybody else that would like to speak at this time? All right, we're going to close the public comment portion. And I don't think there's much to uh, add. The chair would entertain a motion at this time. A motion approved by Council Mariaga. Second. Seconded, no, seconded by Vice Mayor Cabral. Uh, let's go ahead and call the roll, Madam Clerk. And, My uh, apologies, Mr. Mayor. It was motioned by Council Mariaga, seconded by Vice Mayor Cabral. Okay. Motion to. It was approve. close. Everybody wanted to do it. Right. So I just don't, don't everybody take it personally. Everybody <laughs> said it at the same time. So. Okay. I have a motion to approve made by Council Mariaga, seconded by Vice Mayor Cabral. Council Mariaga. Yes. Vice Mayor Cabral. Yes. Councilman yes. Puig Corve. Councilman Cabrera? Yes. Mayor Bermudez? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you so much. We, the, Was, the Was family, obviously, this is a, not only great for, for obviously the Was family, but also for the city of Doral. You were here at the beginning before we were even a city. We bugged you before we were even a city. Uh, we bugged you when we tried to become a city. We bugged you during the time we were becoming a city, and we're very proud that. Uh, Certainly, this will move forward, and it's it, it's probably one of the most important co-designations we'll be able to have. So thank you very much, and congratulations. Okay, Madam Clerk, next item. We're now going into the second readings. Item B, Ordinance Number 2022-18, Amending Code of Ethics. An ordinance of the City Council of City of Doral, Florida, Amending Article 7, Short Code of Ethics, in Chapter 2, Administration of the City's Code of Ordinances, by creating Section 2-385, Improper Influence by Immediate Family Members, creating Section 2-386, Prohibition and transacting business within the city, creating section 2-387, security screening and visiting city hall, providing for incorporation into the code, severability, conflicts, and an effective date. Okay. The public comment portion for this item is not open. Anybody that would like to speak to this item, come on up. State your name and address for the record and give us your opinion in a short, succinct, and concise manner. Okay. Five spins. No one has chosen to speak at this time. Madam Clerk will close the public comment portion. Uh, motion is, to approve. There's, there's a motion to approve by uh, Councilman Prick Corve, seconded by uh, Council Mariaga. Yes, there is. The city attorney had a recommendation. Is that correct? I did, sir. Okay. Um, it's It can be found in section 2-387. Um, it would be the fourth line. Uh, it currently reads that the, the visitors to the third floor would have to wait downstairs and be retrieved and brought upstairs. And the initial thought was security purposes, but I think we have sufficient security and I think that creates an unnecessary uh, impact on, on our staff. So my recommendation would be to modify that to simply state that the visitors to the third floor must sign in on the third floor. So that would require them to sign in and show their IDs on the first floor for security purposes, and there would be a second requirement to sign in uh, when they're on the third floor. And that would be my proposed amendment. Does the maker of the motion have any objection to that change in yes, language? Uh, and those who seconded it? No. Okay. Any other comments, queries, or concerns? I think it's accepted. So if there's no further comments, Madam Clerk, call the roll. Motion to approve ordinance number 2022-18 on second reading, made by Councilman Put Corve, seconded by Councilman Mariaga. Councilman Put Corve. Yes. Councilman Mariaga. Yes. Councilman Cabrera. Yes. Vice Mayor Cabral. Yes. Mayor Bermudez. Yes. Motion passes. Next item, Madam Clerk. Next item, item C. Ordinance number 2022-16, adopting an amended investment policy. An ordinance of the Maine City Council of City of Doral, Florida, adopting an amended investment policy for the city of Doral, providing for survivability, incorporation into the code, and an effective date. Public comment portion is open at this time. Would anybody like to speak to this item? If you want to speak to this item, come on up and give us your opinion in a short, succinct, and concise manner. Okay, five spins of the gavel. Let the record reflect no one's chosen to speak to this item at this time, so the public comment portion is closed. This is a finance item. Is there anything that anybody wants to add from finance or from the administration? Motion to approve. A second. The motion to approve by uh, Vice Mayor Cabral, seconded by Councilman Cabrera. Comments, queries, concerns? There being none, Madam Clerk, go ahead and call the roll. Motion to approve ordinance number 2022-16 on second reading, made by Vice Mayor Cabral, seconded by Councilman Cabrera. 
Vice Mayor Cabral. Yes. Councilman Cabrera. Yes. Councilwoman Mariaca. Yes. Councilman Puy Corbe. Yes. Mayor Bermudez. Yes. Motion passes. Okay, Madam Clerk, next item. Next item, item D, ordinance number 2022-17, budget amendment fiscal year 21-22. An ordinance amend the city council of the city of Dural, Florida, providing for an amendment to the general fund, the building technology fund, and the building fund budget for fiscal year 21-22. As reviewed, modified, and approved by the city council at the meetings held on August 9th and September 14th, 2022, providing for transmittal by the city clerk, implementation, survivability, conflicts, and an effective date. Okay, public comment uh, is open now for proposed ordinance 2022-17. Is there anybody that would like to speak to this item? Coming up, state your name and address for the record and give us your opinion in a short, succinct, and concise manner. If I spins at the gavel, no one has chosen to speak at this time. Let the record reflect that uh, during the public comment portion, no one has chosen to speak. This is also a finance item, unless there's anything else to add. Motion to approve. No. Second. Motion to approve by uh, Councilman Mariaga, seconded by Vice Mayor Cabral. Madam Clerk, let's go ahead and call the roll. Motion to approve ordinance number 2022-17 on second reading, made by Councilman Mariaca, seconded by Vice Mayor Cabral. Councilman Mariaca. Yes. Vice Mayor Cabral. Yes. Councilman Cabrera. Yes. Councilman Pucorve. Yes. Mayor Bermudez. Yes. Motion passes. I only have one comment on that, Madam Clerk. September is misspelled. Sorry. I will go ahead and Just correct that, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Next item. Next item, item E. Ordinance number 2022-14, amending parks and recreation rules and regulations. An ordinance for the mayor and the city council of the city of Dural, Florida, amending chapter 29, parks and recreation, article two rules and regulations of the city court of ordinances by amending rules and regulations pertaining to the operation and use of city park facilities, providing court incorporation into the code, severability, conflicts, and an effective date. Motion to approve. Public comment is open. Before we entertain a motion, we have to open up the public comments. Anybody would like to speak to mm -hmm. proposed ordinance 2022-14? Come on up, state your name and address for the record, and give us your opinion in a short, succinct, and concise manner. There we go. There we go. Get the All right. we'll music right. Let the record reflect that no one has chosen to speak at this time to this item. A motion to approve. Motion approved by mm -hmm. Councilman Pitt Corvey. Second. Seconded by Vice Mayor Cabral. If there's no comments, questions, queries, or concerns of our parks director who's here, then Madam Clerk, are there? There being none, uh, Madam Clerk, go ahead and call the roll. Motion to approve ordinance number 2022-14 on second reading made by Councilman Puig Corvey, seconded by Vice Mayor Cabral. Councilman Puig Corvey. Yes. Vice Mayor Cabral. Yes. Council Um Yes. Councilman Sorry. Cabrera. Yes. Mayor Bermudez. Yes. Motion passes. I believe that wraps up the agenda, Madam Clerk. Is that correct? That'll be it, sir. Okay, so at this point, we'd entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. Motion by Councilwoman Mariaca, seconded by Vice Mayor Cabral. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, we'll see you at the next meeting.